It's after hours at the Fleet Science Center in Balboa Park. There's a pizza around to the right. The museum is closed, but one room is still open for organizers of the San Diego March for Science. Good. They're handing out t-shirts and assigning jobs to volunteers like Peter Ramirez. I'm a, a third generation Mexican-American. Um, I'm the first in my family to go to graduate school, and I'm the first in my family to actually to go the full way to get a doctorate. Ramirez is now a postdoc studying infectious disease at UC San Diego. I just feel that it's really important for me to be a voice to kind of speak out to those people who are scientists, but not only that, but to my fellow people um, who are not scientists, and that's most of my family. This is going to be a peaceful environment where everybody's going to try to get along. The organizers want this to be a nonpartisan demonstration. I don't anticipate a lot of protesters. It's a march for science, they stress, not a march for liberals or against conservatives. This is a free speech event, and there are people who have contrary opinions to our own. But lead organizer Melissa Slauson admits the march was set in motion by one particular political event. Had things been different in November, most likely marches like this probably wouldn't be being organized right now, I'm, I'm assuming. If Hillary had won. If Hillary had won. Unbelievable! The election of Donald Trump distressed many scientists. Cameras, turn over here! This is a president who has called climate change a Chinese hoax, linked autism with vaccines, and pushed for deep cuts to federal science funding. This is the thinking we need. For many, Trump embodies the anti-science sentiment polluting today's politics. The election may be what's pushing many to show up, but Slauson says the march is not about driving people further apart. It's very important for us that all of our outward messaging for this march is of a nonpartisan nature because science in and of itself is nonpartisan. The March for Science was inspired by the success of the Women's March, held just after Trump's inauguration. The women's rights are human rights. In San Diego, marchers will be literally following in the footsteps of the Women's March. The event also begins at Civic Center Plaza and ends at Waterfront Park. At both ends, speakers will talk about why they're standing up for science. A lot of carbon dioxide from coal. and One of them will be Ralph Keeling, a climate scientist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Here's the 400 mark that we crossed some years ago. He maintains the Keeling Curve, a record started by his father in the 1950s to plot carbon dioxide concentration in the Earth's atmosphere over time. So it shows this relentless rise. Uh, and, and there's no doubt that that rise is driven mostly by fossil fuel burning. So it's kind of the smoking gun for a human imprint on the whole planet. Keeling says one of the reasons he's marching is to preserve science as a viable career path for young people. The federal funding of science has had a huge impact on where this country stands in terms of prosperity and opportunity and our position in the world. And uh, that's been true for the last century, and we hope it'll continue to be true in the future. Many scientists will join Keeling in the march, but some plan to stay home. I think scientists are lost now. Where do we fit in? Ram Ramanathan, another Scripps climate scientist, says he's sympathetic to the aims of the march, but he worries it could alienate those who already perceive scientists as politically biased. Lately, Ramanathan has been focused on outreach, trying to convince political and religious leaders about the seriousness of climate change. He wants not only liberals, but conservatives to see him as a neutral expert who can explain climate science without any political agenda. If I participate in the march for science, I'm concerned I would lose that neutral voice. Even if I remain neutral, the perception would be that I'm a biased activist. Spread the word! San Diego March organizer Melissa Slauson says it'll be a tricky balancing act, keeping the march nonpartisan while also seizing on the momentum created by the women's march. It is, it is a tough act to follow, and we're definitely not trying to follow them in that sense. You know, we, we are a different march, though... I think some of the sentiment is the same. To kind of gauge what's going on with the crowd. Organizers are not expecting Women's March level turnout, but close to 10,000 Facebook users have expressed interest in spending their Earth Day marching for science in San Diego. Is anyone super pumped? David Wagner, KPBS News. Yay!